Are we ready? Sound is sound seems fine. The cameras are rolling. Yeah. Thumbs yeah. up from Oliver. Everything's good. Yeah. Um. Perfect. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Bamton Experience. Episode number. You keep the count. I I I can't keep the count. Forty-eight, maybe. I'm actually not sure. We're getting closer to 50. Wow. I'll um, check while you welcome people. But welcome back to another episode. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, to me and, and Hans Christian talking about badminton for, I don't know, 45 minutes to one hour. Um, giving, you, giving, 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 <sighs> damn it, I'm rusty wow. guys. Giving you guys an update on whatever has been going on for the previous month or so. And this is number 47. Episode number 47. Uh, it's going to be a good one, I'm sure. Um, I feel like there's a lot to talk about. Um, four tournaments uh, has just uh, ended. Uh, the Asia leg is uh, is over. Um, well, sort of. Yeah, sort of. There's still ta- Taiwan Open Super yeah. 300 this week. Yeah. Um, but it's a Super 300, so we don't care about that. We don't really count that one. No. But yeah, the four big ones are finished. Back in the days when it was called the super serious mm. level tournaments yeah. Yeah. um a super 300 today would be equivalent to a grand prix grand prix gold yeah grand prix gold yeah. so yeah. another part of the super series yeah. so, so how was it before it was it was called the premier super series and and super series and, and that's grand it. prix gold and grand prix so there was okay. more like a 100 it was a grand prix 300 was a uh, Grand Prix Gold. Yeah. Five hundred was a Super Series, and seven hundred and fifty and one thousand is Super Series Premier. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's different now. When did they change that? If five years ago. Something In eighteen, like I think. Twenty eighteen. Okay. Yeah, five years sure. ago. Yeah. So um. So yeah. Uh. Last time we spoke was just right after the Sudiaman Cup, right? Correct. So there's Correct. been four tournaments since that. Uh. It's been a pretty packed schedule started out with the malaysia open then masters. malaysia masters then thailand open open think, yeah. <laughs> yeah when is it open and when is i'm it actually masters? not sure about thailand but i think it was open uh, yeah it was open i feel like when it's a master then it's usually a 300 when yeah well malaysia open. masters is a 500 but yeah often the open is the bigger of the two events that a country will make sense so host. malaysia has two has two tournaments yeah. so Malaysia Open is the Super 1000 and Malaysia Masters is the Super 500. Correct. Okay, I get it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but Malaysia, Thailand, then Singapore, and then Indonesia. Yeah. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a pretty, pretty tight schedule for a lot of players. Um, yeah. A lot of... Uh, inter- I, can't, I can't even remember. Did you go to Malaysia? No. No. No, I didn't. You were I, still injured. I, I, I was injured at the time. Um, so... I think we spoke about it last time. I didn't. You came back for Singapore. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I was in Singapore and Indonesia, uh, yeah. and you showed up only for Indonesia. for Indonesia. Yeah. Um, I remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so there's a lot to talk about. I have a few notes here. Um, Lisi Jia out with some interesting statements. Uh, mm-hmm. Anse Young is on an impressive streak. Um, Victor won his third consecutive uh, Indonesia Open title. It's crazy. Which is uh, extremely impressive. One on Bali and then two on uh, in, in, in Jakarta. Genting, number two in the world. Mm-hmm. It's also on a good run, back-to-back finals, Singapore and Indonesia Open. And then the Olympic uh, qualification period has started. Uh, and I think that's very interesting. Um, I think we should give the audience some um, knowledge about how to qualify and, and talk about some of the interesting um runs if yeah. you can say that Match because ups. there's um there's multiple countries that has um x amount of players that can qualify and it's mm. going to be exciting to see who yeah. will do that yeah definitely it's always a very intense period where like usually we see badminton as part kind of a team sport in some ways that you like travel in a group and you you compete for your country and you yeah you're kind of teammates but like in the olympic qualifying race everything just intensifies because uh you're fighting with your teammates for the mm. spot so it's getting it's getting awkward for sure yeah definitely um, definitely because uh, you're really fighting against your training partners yeah. um so it's interesting yeah. um should we just take it from the top or do Let's you have do anything to to add in 
I'm just excited to get going. So yeah. let's start with the uh, Li Xi Jia thing. He, uh, yeah, he he came out after the Indonesia Open, right? Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm I'm rocking a Victor X Li Xi Jia shirt here. Yeah, so, that's no coincidence. Uh, it's to show us the support because he is a friend of the podcast. He's a friend of of mine and a friend of the podcast. So I'm 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 uh, repping his. Uh, merchandise today yeah. to, together with Victor. Um, I'm, no, not, I'm not sure you would wear it if it was like a Yonex or Forza or a Linning shirt. Definitely not. No. <laughs> it's, it's because we are sponsored by the same <laughs> brand as well. So yeah. it, ma- it makes sense. <laughs> no, but but he, Lee Si Jia, he's, uh, he's an interesting character. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he came out after the Indonesia Open. He lost in the in the first round, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To to Laksha Sen. Fifteen and ten, something like that. <clears throat> yeah. Probably not his best performance. He I could have imagined that he was a bit um disappointed or something. Mm-hmm. And he said that he was uh going to, to quit. Yeah, take a break for take like break. in infin infinitely time. <clears throat> so like he doesn't know for how long. Um, was it a break from practice or was it just a break from tournament he wasn't really say? clear about that He, I, I'm not sure if he actually used the word retirement but it was kind of like yeah he had no clue when he was going to come back I know that he hired a new coach uh, and the guy who is uh, currently coaching in Hong Kong hmm? uh, and he will start uh, his contract on the 1st of July uh, Okay. so I wonder if Li Xi will be back for that uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm imagining this guy uh, like sitting in Hong Kong would not have been too happy about reading that statement. Like he's uh, quit his job in Hong Kong one year before the Olympics, and then uh, yeah, before he starts, his player says that yeah, I'm gonna take a break. So uh, it's gonna be real interesting to see. But, yeah, like his results has been so much up and down. I actually thought he was he was finding his uh, way a little bit again at the Sudirman Cup. I had a feeling there that he was performing better, and yeah, everything looked better for him, but. It was really disappointing in terms of how he performed in the uh, individual tournaments, especially Indonesia. Yeah, especially Indonesia. Yeah, yeah. but the the week before that, in um, where was that? In Singapore, Singapore yeah. he lost. He lost a very close match to Wing Hong Yang from mm. uh, from China, twenty one nineteen in the third game, and I was watching the majority of the match and I would say the level and the intensity was very high. Mm. It wasn't like a poor performance yeah. uh, from from the Sijia there. Um, I feel like he's also here and there. He's getting some tough draws. He's all. I also feel like he's he's um, always playing like the latest match on the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I just feel yeah, like he's he's right. always playing like very late in the day. Maybe the last match, and then he's playing some crazy match, losing twenty one nineteen in mm-hmm. third or something. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's just a few times, but uh, I just feel like it has happened. Uh, yeah happened often but he's definitely still showing mm. signs of like that high level as we remember yet when he beat uh, Li Shifeng in Swiss Open in the mm. first round right after Li Shifeng won the All England I was watching that match uh, yeah, some of it I was playing on the court right after and like it, the level was so high the intensity was high you could see like the fire in his eyes that he was he really really wanted to win that match so badly so like I'm not really uh, I'm not Where really was this in Switzerland? In Switzerland, yeah. yeah, Swiss Open in Basel. I'm not really doubting that he still has the desire and he still wants to come back. To me, it just feels like he he's really like struggling to find this clear path where he knows what to do week in and week out to to perform at the highest level. Because I, I still think we see it every now and then that the level is still there. Mm-hmm. It's just about yeah finding the consistency. And I'm guessing that his entire situation with no coach and uh, yeah, having to do everything by himself and finding him pl- his place in that would play a big part. Of mm. It is it is stressful for sure. Um, I'm also now in the situation where I'm more independent and relying more on myself, and mm. I have to make every decision by myself. Almost, mm. uh, it is definitely stressful. Um, I don't know if 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 that's to blame. Um, I feel like when he was uh, practicing uh, at BAM, mm-hmm. he was also kind of like a a Up player there. with some mood yeah. swings, and sometimes he was playing incredible, sometimes yeah. he wasn't performing that well. So I don't know if we can blame uh, the fact that he's independent. Um, but I mean, yeah, you just never really know with Lizzie Jia where he is uh, mentally, and I also feel like it can change qu- quite rapidly during a match. Mm. Um, sometimes I feel like it, it, it comes down to the beginning of the match. If he gets like a good start, maybe 
Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he has some success with some crazy smashes or a trick shot or something. Then he like, mm. yeah, show, shows off, and mm. then then he starts to really, yeah, yeah, enjoy himself on in, court, in, enjoy and open what up he's doing everything. on court exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if he's getting a bit unlucky or something, mm. then it can go in the other direction yeah. uh, quite quite rapidly. I don't know. I I mean I I I hope he get his uh, his his stuff together. I hope mm. that he's not too stressed about being independent. Hopefully mm. the new coach will um will be a good thing for him. Mm. Uh yeah, I'm, I'm sure it will to get like some more structure or something yeah. I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know the coach like personally like in terms of how he's coaching and stuff, but when I I spoke to Kenneth Jonas mm. about it the other day and he was like praising this guy a lot so yeah i think that's a uh, like a quality stamp if kenneth says that so yeah, yeah it's it's going to be real interesting to see like how that's going to change uh, things for uh, for lee yeah. what kind of effect it will have but the good thing for these guys is that uh he won't have any tournaments in the next few weeks anyway right yeah i don't think he signed up for uh canada and us I'm pr- I'm pretty sure he's not in the Canada. No, I don't I don't I don't yeah. think he is. So he he has a few weeks to to take some time off and uh, regroup and get back. Uh, and I'm sure he will. Um, a guy with with that amount of talent and we we all know how well he can play. He will definitely do well again. Um, no doubt, no doubt. No. We still believe in him. Yeah, at we do. TB. At we TB, got your we, back. We, we, we still got your back, Lisi. Yeah, for sure. Um, next one. On the on the menu today, Anse Young is on a pretty impressive roll. She was, she was, yeah. It ended now here in Indonesia. Yeah, she lost the semi final, which is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I would kill for a semi final almost, but yeah, she. There was the first time this year she uh, failed to reach the final in a tournament she entered, so she's only won or uh, came second in all tournaments this year. That's now crazy. she lost the semi final to uh, Chen Yufei. Mm-hmm. Which I think for Chen Yufei, this was the f- only the first or the second title since uh, her Olympic gold, actually. Okay, wow. She's lost quite a few finals. We have a yeah, question about the, yeah. the, the top four in women's singles mm. right now. It's pretty pretty clear and obvious that it's An Young and Tai Su Ying, uh, Yamaguchi mm. and Chen Yufei. I would say so, but I would say it's pretty clear that Yamaguchi, yeah, that is for, <laughs> <laughs> I, for me, it's pretty clear that it's Yamaguchi and uh, Anse Young, who's one and two, and then the other two are okay. three and four. Uh, Yamaguchi has been almost as consistent as Anse Young, and she's been a little bit better at winning the final, so she's also like 1,000 points ahead still. Uh, so Yamaguchi is still number one in the She's still number one, wow. like 1,000 points ahead, so they are almost equal, those two. Okay. Um, but yeah. I think this Asia leg showed that maybe Anse Young is uh, overtaking her, uh, yeah, steadily, slowly but steadily. So uh, we might have a new world number one in women's yeah. singles pretty soon. And she's only twenty-one. It's yeah. like the consistency at that age, I think, mm. is just unbelievable. And the maturity unbelievable. in the way she she plays and the way she like carries herself on mm. court. Yeah. Um, I think it's very interesting to see that she's always very calm, uh, mm. quite emotionless. But at, but when she wins, then you see the emotions, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then she yeah. really like celebrates, um, yeah. and that just shows me that she's been holding back all the time, mm. just like keep keeping herself uh, calm and stuff, yeah, and that's yeah. not easy, uh, no. especially not at that age. Yeah. Um, I feel like you often see players being pretty calm during a match, mm. but then at that stage when they let's say they reach seventeen or eighteen or something, that mm. now they are very very close see it a lot with a guy like Joe Chin Chin. Mm. Like he yeah. can be very like yeah. relaxed and calm and not really show a lot. But when it's like crunch time and he's yeah. close to getting the win, then suddenly yeah, he starts <laughs> he, shouting he, like crazy. He, yeah. starts, he starts going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she really True. waits until it's over. Yeah. Uh, she, she's very, very composed. Mm. Um, that's, yeah, that's super impressive yeah. along with the way she plays and yeah. her yeah. technical yeah. skills and the way she moves and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think like looking one year ahead for the Olympics, I'll be very surprised if she doesn't go into that as the uh, as the favorite as things are developing right now. Because mm. I think she's also like she's getting better all the time. I don't feel like Tai Su Ying is in a like a positive development where she's getting better and better. I also don't feel that with Chen Yufei. Like mm. obviously they're still amazing and some of the best, but I mm. kind of feel like their level is more 
more of the same yeah where she's just yeah reaching new heights uh, all the time so yeah i right now i would think she's gonna go into the olympics as the uh, the favorite and me too time. me too i actually saw her doing indonesia open she was walking with a, a big bag of ice on her knee mm. um it was after the first round uh and i was like oh maybe, maybe she lost today and then i checked tournament software mm. She won 21 10, 21 4. <laughs> <laughs> and then after the match, we're like walking uh, like there yeah. was something yeah. horribly wrong with her knee yeah. or something. Um, but I mean, yeah, she could she could be tired as well. Mm. Uh, maybe that could be one of the reasons why she didn't made it all the way. But obviously, yeah. Chen Yufei is a phenomenal player as yeah. well. So. That's also the one thing I didn't like about the planning of this Asian leg that it was so many like weeks in a row and also the Sodium Cup. And then you had the Super 1000 as like the final mm. stop. So I think a lot of players actually started in Indonesia feeling a little bit fatigued mm -hmm. from a lot of traveling, a lot of competing. Uh, and I actually thought about it uh, when uh, when she lost and when uh, Victor ended up winning, that was it in some ways, of course it's never an advantage to get injured, but was it in some ways an advantage for Victor that he didn't play the weeks before? Mm. Cause he came to that super 1000 completely like energized and didn't spend any like mental energy on competing in the uh, in the previous oh. weeks of course if he anything was, he was already the best in the world before that but like yeah was it an advantage uh, in the end actually well 100 percent, and i'm i'm thinking this the same uh for, for my situation mm -hmm. then uh i didn't participate in the three weeks prior to singapore yeah. uh sudia man cup and and then malaysia and thailand and i showed up to singapore also like yeah, to totally fine in the body, obviously mm -hmm. coming off an injury, uh, but... And hungry to play. Exactly, yeah. uh, motivated to, to play and get going. And Victor mm -hmm. was probably in the exact same situation the week after. Um, I'm 100% sure that his hunger was building up like mm -hmm. crazy. Also yeah. during the Singapore Open, yeah. um, where like I went to the final and stuff, mm -hmm. and I, I know how I would have felt if I mm -hmm. was just like sitting watching yeah, Bamson yeah, in the television, yeah. like getting eager to to go out and do something myself so i guess he was in in that exact situation yeah, yeah, um yeah. and you could see it in him uh let's just jump from from the woman singles on to mm. to victor yeah uh you could see it in him when he won his first round that he celebrated like yeah like it wasn't the first round yeah. um so i think even it, though he won like 12 and 8 yeah, or something like that super yeah. convincingly yeah. so i think it was obvious that he was a very happy to be back and it meant a lot to him mm. for sure yeah. um he might also have been a little bit tense before that match because of the injury like it was a, a pulled muscle in his hamstring so i could also imagine he was like maybe a little bit yeah. nervous about how it would react yeah and, uh, yeah 100 percent because it's just different to to practice uh, yeah. and get comfortable there but it's 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 just a different thing to yeah, to play a match in, mm. in a real match situation, you you have to let go in in an, yeah. in a different way. Uh, yeah. You you yeah. really can't hold back. Uh, then the, then it's going to be very very difficult. Mm. I actually have, um, I actually feel like I have it like the opposite way. Like it's mm. difficult for me in practice yeah. to really let go. It takes me a long time coming back from an injury, but I've tried it twice now. I tried it in January when I came back from my groin injury, yeah. and then I tried it again here in singapore when i came back from my other injury my it was a glute injury mm. um i was struggling in practice to really let go yeah um and really train at like 100 percent intensity yeah exactly yeah. but i i kind of had the feeling like when i step on court and the adrenaline mm. is uh yeah. is rushing um then i believe i i, I will be able to to let go and mm. it was actually first at that point during the maybe actually the second round match that i was really letting go um yeah. and trusting the body again or maybe not not thinking about it so much mm. whereas in in practice it was always like every move i made <laughs> yeah. i was like feeling is yeah. is it okay is it yeah. getting better yeah. is it getting worse yeah. but here it's just like something else takes over mm. and distracts you from from those uh feelings so yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah i can i can relate to that like I, i've been struggling with my hamstring uh yeah, as you know, and you guys know as well, ever since December. And uh, I was struggling all the way up to Indonesia Open as well. Um, but the only time I didn't feel any pain at all was during the match against mm. Ginseng. Uh, yeah. 
and like it wasn't because he didn't play fast or anything like he was pushing me around the corners and everything so but it's just the adrenaline yeah the adrenaline yeah. does a lot yeah I That's also funny. took a few painkillers, but still, yeah. <laughs> they can help as yeah. well. They, they can help as well. Now back to Victor. Yeah. Um, ended up winning the the tournament third time in a row uh, at the Indonesia Open. Mm. Um, that's super impressive uh, as mentioned before the first time was on Bali that was the first time he won it I'm quite sure mm. uh, and then he he won two times in Jakarta now yeah um, yeah this time without even dropping a game on the way okay didn't all even straight, drop a game yeah, straight wow. games in all five matches um, very convincingly I think yeah. he, he he looked like super solid uh, mm. in, in uh, obviously he was super solid uh, when he did not uh, drop a single game um but just making making very few mistakes. Yeah. He, he kept it quite simple. Mm. Uh, kept the shuttles, kept the shuttle on the court. Um, mm. Didn't like do anything crazy or something. But just steadily, slowly, um, yeah, outmaneuvering uh, the opponent. And mm. the opponent ended up making too many mistakes when Victor just kept it in play all yeah. the time. Yeah. I feel like that was pretty much his strategy strategy doing, yeah doing yeah i would agree yeah, and i think that's like it sounds very simple and easy to do but especially in an arena like that where it is still quite windy i know the shuttles were slower this time mm-hmm. compared to when we went there in january but still it's a quite windy stadium so at least for me i don't feel like oh it's... in january it was pretty slow as well they were pretty slow as well. in jakarta yeah it was okay. pretty slow all right it's yeah. been pretty slow in indonesia for long time for a long time yeah. which is uh actually different from like five years back yeah, or something yeah. i remember yeah. when i was a youngster watching uh, badminton in the store and iron on television mm. it looked like extremely fast and the first mm. few times i played out there the conditions was also pretty fast yeah um don't you also feel like it was more windy back then than it is now yeah it was yeah. definitely more windy uh, especially when it comes to the yeah, like headwind and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you're playing with the with the yeah. drift and and against the drift. Yeah. This year there was a lot of side drift, yeah. um, but not yeah. so much uh, the other two yeah, ways. Front and back. Yeah. Um. So I feel like it was it was more tricky to play in this daughter mm-hmm. back then. Yeah. Uh, be- because yeah, I would the agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, but I would still say it's it's part of the reason why I find it even more impressive that like he's not dropping a game and he doesn't give away those mistakes. Like it doesn't really take him long to to settle when he changes ends so like the, for me at least i will always have why, to kind why, of why would it there is there's not a lot of drift th- there is still ways. drift there is there is a bit of drift but it's not I just, like i just feel like it's still impressive that he's he doesn't take any time to it's definitely change. impressive 100 yeah. percent. i i had the feeling when <clears> i played <throat> ginseng also that he wasn't playing with any drift actually <laughs> i had this yeah. feeling that i had to think about all my shots like mm. uh, how to take care of the side drift and i yeah. felt like no matter which corner i played him into he could play any shot he wanted to uh, yeah without thinking about anything and he had no chance against victor so maybe he had the same feeling against yeah victor in the and final. i had the same feeling against anthony in singapore as well mm. yeah. like he, he he could just play everything yeah. um that's like the next level of uh, a player that's really good playing mm. uh, with drift. Yeah. It's like most players would perhaps aim for this side where it's easier because mm. the drift is taking the shuttle back into the court. Like a, like a guy like Anthony, he, he, he can just play the other side, the more difficult side, mm. just as well. Yeah. And if you're able to do that, if you're able to attack uh with the side drift yeah, yeah with the side drift to that yeah. side where it's more risky because it's likely that it will go out mm. if you're if you're able to like hit it with the right margin to the line you can really get some power in your attacks yeah. Yeah. using the drift yeah. um and a guy like anthony is really good at that for sure um and his attack is already pretty good without getting help from the drift <laughs> yeah. i mean he, he, can, he can hit both sides it's uh it's incredible yeah. um but no, what else? He played against uh, Pranoy in the semifinal. Uh, interesting match mm-hmm. um, because Pranoy had defeated Victor two times prior. Yeah. But he, did, he didn't really stand a chance this time. Too many mistakes. He, I th- feel like he was definitely struggling with the, with the drift. Mm. Uh, he was lifting a lot out on the baseline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was because I had this feeling that he, he was struggling to really figure out how he needed to play victor mm. i don't know if it was because the same tactics 
as he's used it the last couple of times maybe didn't work so he didn't really know how to approach it i i had the feeling when i was watching it that he was really searching for a way to play um and because of that maybe that he started making more mistakes because he he yeah he was thinking too much about what to do instead of just like playing with the game plan that he had uh, he had planned on before the match started yeah does it make sense mm, yeah, a little bit i i don't know how he i i, I didn't even watch the last two uh, matches they played against. Yeah, me, me neither. So, I don't uh, know what his I don't know what what before. worked well back then. Um, but I could just tell that he was making way too many mistakes. Mm. Uh, but I think it's it's pretty much credit to to Victor. Um, because one thing that is very very difficult when playing against Victor is that you just know if you don't have the right quality in your strokes, mm. especially in your in your in your lift or whatever you play to the baseline, you will get punished right away because he is that big and he has yeah. uh, such such a good attack um so there there is like a higher pressure for 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 the opponent to play victor's baseline whereas um if you play it against someone with a less good attack mm. you you wouldn't really need to aim for the line yeah. but you need to do that against victor mm. and therefore i feel like um it's likely that Victor gets a lot of points from the opponent lifting it out on the baseline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I, I think I see that quite often um, that they feel so much pressure playing to the baseline. Yeah, yeah. That they either end up only playing to the net mm-hmm. and then running back and forth yeah. until they die. <laughs> yeah, that is like the certain death. At some or point. playing to the baseline. Yeah, they either get punished because yeah. he smashes it down mm. or or whatever, mm. or they lift it too long. Mm. That's kind of like yeah something that you can experience when you face yeah. victor that's so what uh, should you do <laughs> uh, what should you do uh should i tell that here on the podcast um no, I no. Should. I'm, not, I'm not here to reveal strategies against different players or anything Fair enough. i'm just trying to let the audience know yeah what's the i'm just asking what, what was one of the struggles you would just like to know <laughs> i have no idea like i was training with him in indonesia uh yeah the day before the tournament started and i felt like he was playing at 50 maybe at 60 percent if i'm uh, being kind to myself and i still had absolutely no chance <laughs> i had no idea how to win points so no. i also didn't show I up have, in my I best shape I've... but i felt like even if i showed up in my best shape maybe he would have to play at like i feel like ma- ma- many players have have felt that uh, <laughs> during the last uh, last few years playing against victor so yeah uh, he defeated prano in the semi final uh, very solid performance from victor uh, and then in the final just as convincingly against uh, anthony ginting mm-hmm. um and uh, yeah, very impressive uh, final once again, uh, especially having in mind that Anthony has uh, been doing pretty well in mm-hmm. Indonesia and and in in, uh, in Singapore the, the week prior. Um, yeah, I think in general this year, right? Ginting. In general this year, and, and that's the Ginting is uh, our, our next, uh, so it's a perfect segue to, mm-hmm. to jump to him. He's our next topic. Um, first of all, I feel like Ginseng is number two in the world right now, right? Um, but I, I feel like there has been a lot of different players at that number two spot mm-hmm. during the last six months or something. Yeah. I was even there. And then Crazy. Lizzy Jia was there. It says everything. I don't know if, if Kodai or Kunle would, were there. No, I don't think they, they was. But Christy. Christy was Christy. there as well. Yeah. So it, it, it hasn't really meant a lot to be number two in the world. Mm. I, I feel like because it's been switching so much. and yeah. Everyone from two to ten basically has been yeah. the running for yeah. it. Yeah. The, yeah, they have been able to, to beat each other. Mm. Um, yeah. It's only been like Victor has been dominating at the top, but mm. everyone else was like kind of equal. Yeah. Um, but now I feel like Gensing has like... I think Matt. he he's consolidated himself as yeah. the number two in the world. Definitely, I, I was. Like ju- I just well. checked the rankings also before we uh, we start recording. I think he's ten or eleven thousand points ahead of number three now. Yeah. Actually, so that that's a pretty clear margin now. And uh, yeah, no doubt that he's he is the number two guy. Yeah, I, I would say that as well. Mm-hmm. He he won the the Asia Championships, mm-hmm. won the Singapore Open, and then was in in a final in the final against Victor in, in Indonesia mm-hmm. Open. Um, yeah. And he shows that he can he can also play very well in under all all different uh, circumstances mm. and different conditions yeah. because um, 
to be honest, I'm not really 100% sure how it was at the Asia Championships, but in Singapore, it was super windy, mm. pretty fast shuttles. Mm. Um, but then the, the, the week after in Indonesia, it was like still windy, but in a different way. Mm. Um, but then super slow shuttlecocks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he is he's able to play under all circumstances. I would still feel like um obviously i can't talk for him but i I would believe that he prefers like faster badminton Mm. like faster shuttlecocks uh and and, and windy conditions um more than let's say a place like all england uh, Mm. or indonesia where it's slow shuttlecocks and um i would definitely agree it's difficult to yeah to get it's more difficult to get through with his attack mm. um but it seems like he can still do it against everyone else yeah. than against victor mm. um, and what, what yeah why do you think that is like why do you think he's struggling so much with victor because he's lost the last i don't know like eight times in a row now <laughs> he actually he started off beating victor when they were a little bit younger uh, but like for the past uh, a few years he hasn't really been able to hurt him in any way i would say f- there's multiple reasons um first of all victor's defense is pretty pretty good probably the best defense there is Mm -hmm. um his lifts is also very very good Mm. um and my old coach slash mentor (laughs) i just knew you were gonna say this i've I've said it before (laughs) modern frost uh legend legend from denmark um now the what is he head of sports in england or something yeah yeah correct um he used to say that the secret behind a good defense is a good lift yeah mixer has both a really good length length on his lifts Mm. and then a really good detect uh, uh, sorry really good defense yeah he's a big guy he's covering the court very well Mm. so if you don't hit it like very precise there is a a a risk that you will get punished Mm. with with like a long run cross court or something Mm. Mm. um so yeah victor is good at making sure that anthony does not get in the good attacking positions because of the length of his lift and then he has a very very good defense but then the third thing is like i feel like anthony doesn't 100 percent believe that he can get it mm. down on victor yeah maybe for good reasons because mm. of the the two things that i just mentioned before but when, when you see anthony attacking against almost every other player it's like with crazy confidence yeah and when he when he attacks against Victor, it's like there's just something about it. He's holding back a little yeah, bit. There's yeah. it's like he doesn't really believe that he's able to mm. to get it down. He's also playing like more uh, like just like building the rallies and stuff. And mm. that's not really his style when he has yeah. his confidence at at, at his highest. Mm. He's just going for the lines and he's just hitting the lines every yeah. single time. Yeah. Yeah. And those attacks would be very difficult for Victor as well to get back. Mm. But it's just like he's he's not really believing in it. Yeah. And, and yeah. I feel like that's manifesting uh, itself in, in, in his attack that they're not as good yeah. because he's not like doing it Makes 100%. Yeah. I, I, and th- yeah. That's what I see. And yeah. then he starts to hit them yeah. just like this out of the sidelines. Yeah. And then he loses more confidence, uh, and, confidence yeah. and hope a little bit. Yeah. And Victor is probably, on the contrary, building up confidence that mm. he feels very safe and actually, yeah, also lifting and giving way some initiative. Yeah. And it's, it's probably, like, it probably just gets worse and worse because he keeps on, like, losing. So, like, where should that belief come from for mm. the next match? Because yeah. now, once again, he showed Victor that, yeah, he completely controls things 100% yeah. when he plays against him. Uh, I, I felt like Ginseng was a little bit in the match in the start of both games but like very quickly around the uh, the 10 11 mark victor just uh, yeah mm. pulled away and there was no yeah. no real question about who was going to win or not no so he he needs to find maybe a way of being yeah, as you say more like believe in his attack but he still needs to be patient so like believe that he, even if he has to hit those attacks one or two or three more times it is the way to go for him because mm. he cannot, as you say, he cannot really change his game into a more rallying type style. I don't really think it's the way to. You know, it probably won't go Victor. go well for him. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But obviously, Bamson at, at the very very top. It there's not just one way. I yeah, mean, you need yeah. to be very very complex. Mm. So <sighs> obviously, for Ginzing just to beat Victor by 
only winners from the baseline, that's <laughs> yeah, going to be difficult. So he needs sure. to win on other aspects as well. I mean, at the net, playing rallies and being good in the defense as well and stuff like that. So, yeah, he'll have to figure that out himself. <laughs> but but there's definitely something about the belief. Mm. And it makes sense. I mean, if you have lost to a player countless times yeah. and just ran into a wall physically or mentally so many times, you start to lose a bit of confidence. But it's interesting to see, I mean... To be honest, the match went exactly how I expected it to, mm. to go. Um, yeah. And you just kind of knew that the smashes that previously had, had been on the line for the mm. last two weeks, suddenly yeah. they started to be just out like a few centimeters. Yeah. And yeah, but that's the, that's the pressure from playing against Victor's defense that mm. you know that you need to be that sharp in your yeah. defense, in, in your attack. Yeah. Otherwise, it can be actually not even a good idea to attack yeah. and that's where you you see a lot of players stopping to actually mm. attack yeah because his defense is not only good in the way that he can get everything back but he's actually like counter attacking in his defense yeah straight away exactly yeah yeah well but um but other than when he plays against victor he is a he's a phenomenal player. He's also when he's <laughs> playing against victor he is a phenomenal uh, player uh, i really love his style he's so explosive, uh, so fast. Technically, he's. Uh, I, I said it after I lost to him in Singapore. He's a magician yeah. on court, yeah. and sometimes it's. Um, I really got my ass kicked against Anthony in the Singapore Open final, but I actually really enjoyed playing against him under those conditions where I know he is a. He's a thriving. Yeah, he's yeah. thriving. I mean, he's been in three consecutive uh, Singapore Open finals and won the last two. Um. And I could just feel like, okay, this is a this is a different level. Uh, yeah. I was playing a good match against Kodai the day before, mm. um, but this was just a different level. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, he Ginsing, he he kind of transforms the game into art. Sometimes. Yeah, like it, when he's yeah. really on it and playing his best, it yeah. is yeah like an art form. It it, it looks yeah. amazing. I mean, he's a, su- such such a, a great player. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's Ginsing, the second best in the world. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Um, so interesting, very very interesting at at the moment. I, I really think men's single is is at a fun point. It is. Um, it is. The competition is pretty fierce. The depth is very high in the yeah. Uh, in yeah, the, and we uh, should mention top. a player like Kunlevud as well. Uh, two titles this year. Um, mm. He won in Thailand just a few weeks ago, and then he uh, also won in India, where he actually defeated Victor. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. In January, which is rare. So um, and Panoy finally got his first title. Panoy, yeah, uh, former guest on the Banton Experience. Yeah. We talked about it back then that he was like a a, a Kingslayer yeah, or a giant yeah. giant killer. Yeah. What, what did we say? Yeah. Um, but he had had never really claimed a, a title. Um, but finally he got one yeah. in Malaysia. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing for him, and uh, hopefully that can also, yeah, hopefully for him at least that can also like give him the confidence that mm. he can win more titles now he got the first one uh, off his back he's been very consistent like yeah. playing at a good level reaching quarterfinals and stuff um but yeah he followed it up with a with a semifinal in in indonesia as well so for the second year in a row for the second year in a row he lost to sao yunping last year who then lost to victor in the final okay so um yeah impressive good to uh Good to see him cla- claiming a title. He's playing in Taiwan again this week. I, yeah. di- I didn't yeah. know that, but I just saw that. That's, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool pranoia. <laughs> Let's get into the Olympic qualification race. Um, as some of you guys know, the Olympic qualification period started 1st of May and it will end 1st of May next year. Um, it runs for one year. It runs for one year, and um, so basically, it's the world ranking at the first of May next year that decides yeah. who will qualify and who will not. Exactly. So um, obviously, everyone wants to qualify for the Olympic Games. It is the biggest event that you can participate in. <laughs> Multi-sport event only uh, every fourth year, so it is rare and it is uh, very, very special. And I, I feel like there's no doubt doubt that 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 is the 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 biggest thing um i'm yet to meet a badminton player who doesn't believe the olympics is the uh the number one thing to win exactly you sometimes there are some that prefer all england over the world championships 
Uh, but I've never heard that anyone has preferred anything over the Olympics. No. It is the number one thing. It is for sure. So um, so there's a lot of on the line at the moment. Every time you participate in a tournament, is it's not just like points to the, to the world ranking or, or whatever it is. It's also that you're trying to qualify for the Olympic Games. Yeah. And there is this rule that you can get two players from each country in in the in each category in each category yeah. that's the maximum yeah and it so doesn't it, even matter if let's say china had number one two and three in the world no they can only get two only players get two, yeah. so we've been um, in that situation before actually where a top four player has failed to wow go there because yeah there were limitations on uh, how many could go from each country it used to be three players back in the days, uh, but uh, then you had to have all three in top four. But now, no matter what, no matter how high you're ranked, you can only get two players in each category. And it's, um, I feel like it's very interesting. So if a country needs uh, two players uh, to, to qualify, uh, the, and this counts for the singles categories, then those two players need to be in the, t- in the, in the top 16 yeah. in the world. Um, I feel like there is a uh, potentially um, a few countries that can have more than two players in the in the top sixteen. Yeah. Um, because they have like multiple mm. candidates to qualify. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking one of the countries could be China. Yeah. Oh, another one could be India, Taiwan, uh, Denmark. Mm. Who else? Japan. Japan. Um, and it's just... <laughs> and another fun one, uh, France. Yeah. They probably won't get... They probably won't get two players in top 16. No, for sure not. Um, Indonesia has an outside chance of two in top... Uh, three in top in 16. Indonesia as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, if... Let's say... Let's say... Uh, some country only has one player, but they're not even in, in top 16. He, he will mm-hmm. qualify anyway, right? Yeah, he needs to be around, let's say, like top eighty in the world. If you have top eighty, maybe top ninety, uh, you will you will qualify if you're the okay. number one from your country. Okay. But that's another interesting aspect because those guys in the bottom of uh, top one hundred, for them it's very important how many countries will qualify two players, because if Denmark qualifies two players, it will of course remove a spot because mm. there's only eighty four spots. Yeah. Oh, 48, uh, 48 spots. So if Denmark qualifies two, that takes away a spot from the bottom of the of the rankings. If Denmark only qualifies one, then there's one extra spot. So all these countries where you are like just fighting to get in, they are hoping that no countries basically will uh, qualify more than one. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I mentioned France, um, yeah. it's interesting because it's it's really i mean it's it's probably going to be either toma junior popov or christo junior popov mm. and they have pretty done uh, two of the both of them have uh, have done some good results here yeah, lately yeah, i mean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be very interesting we yeah. talked with uh, to toma about it uh, in um, when we had him on the podcast mm. Mm. That they they are going to fight for the for the spot and yeah. their dad is their coach and everything. So and they are still playing doubles together in all the tournaments <laughs> as well. So it's yeah. it's going to be very yeah. very interesting yeah. to see. I, I um, think there's actually a small chance that this guy Alex Lanier he can uh, yeah. uh, he can uh, get there as well. He's up to forty in the ranking, so he's yeah. not not far behind. It's just difficult for him. He's it not is, a, he's is. not able to enter the biggest tournaments. Yeah. Uh, and Christo and uh, Toma. Can now both uh, participate in the biggest yeah. tournaments yeah. Um, because of their results yeah. lately. Yeah, but yeah, for ha- them it will most likely be the guy who ends up the highest in the ranking will probably go. Um, do you, yeah. do you think that let's say Christo is playing a match, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you have to be honest, <laughs> yeah. do you think that Toma is hoping that he wins or loses that match? Uh. I think it's <laughs> it's very difficult for me to answer because I don't have like a brother or a sister like who plays in that way. Uh, but I could definitely say like I've been in the situation with fighting with uh, Jan uh, Jorgensen before, which was one of my close friends. Uh, when we were fighting to qualify in London, uh, I definitely didn't hope that he was winning all his matches like I was before. 
because it was bad for me. Mm. Uh, it would make my chance of qualifying uh, smaller. Mm. Uh, but it wasn't like I was sitting there and like cheering for his opponent or anything. But I definitely in the Olympic qualifying year didn't feel the same uh, like joy on his behalf if he won. Uh, and I would always see the positive thing if he lost. Uh, mm. Like it, it sounds very cynical, but I'm, yeah, but it makes. I'm pretty it makes sure sense. that mm. for almost everyone it is mm. like that. But I I don't know if like the bro- brother thing, like the no. family thing, makes it uh, different. Like because obviously, I, I, hopefully they love each other, so mm. it, it's it might be a little bit yeah a little bit different. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. It's just yeah. it's it's, it's just, interesting. It's just interesting to yeah. to think about. It would be fun to ask them, and then like I I wouldn't even be sure if we got like an honest answer. No, I mean they they <laughs> obviously they can't tell the truth. No, no, no. If, no. if the truth is that they want each other to lose, yeah. yeah. Um, but it must be complicated. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's start with yeah. India. They have a, a possibility of of getting, and now we are only talking men singles. Mm. Uh, they they have. For me to see three candidates at the moment, they have Pranoy, they have Laksha Sen, and they have uh, Srikan Kedambi. Yeah. Um, Pranoy has been doing very well. I feel like at the moment he is definitely um, yeah, the front runner. Yeah, the front runner from India. But then it's it's going to be interesting to see if either, if either Srikant or Laksha can can enter the top yeah. sixteen. Yeah. Um, I don't, f- I don't know if they potentially both can enter top sixteen, mm. and then the rules is uh, if they're if you have three players in the top sixteen, you'll have to remove one of them. The federation, yeah, the federation can choose anyone they want. So exactly, they don't have to go with the two highest ranked players. But they faced each other now here in Indonesia, Srikanth mm. and Laksha, and uh, Srikanth uh, actually won. Mm. So yeah. another country that I feel like is is pretty interesting is Taiwan. Mm. They have a, a a bunch of like new um, new players coming mm. up uh, from Taiwan. It's not longer, it's not anymore just uh, Cho Chin Chin and Su Wei Wang. Now mm. they have the player I faced in Singapore. His name is Li Chiao Hao. Ah, Ch- Chia Hao Li. Ah, okay, uh, Li, yeah. Li Chia Hao. I yeah. don't know which one. You There's say so first, many of, of these yeah. guys. I'm not really good at remembering. There's the left hander uh, Lin Lin Chun Yi. Who won? Where did he win? He he won oh. in Thailand in January. Yeah, I the, think that's the left, correct. Yeah. The left-handed, yeah. and the, I think feel he like, has a really nice game. Yeah, he, he was it was uh, he was the one playing two hours against Koda in Malaysia. Correct, correct. Um, so he's there, and then there's Sui Wang and Cho Chin Chen. Mm. Um, they could potentially get two in the top sixteen mm. as well. Mm. Um, and it will be interesting to see if uh, if some of these newer guys can compete with Cho mm. because he has been in, in the top for Taiwan uh, yeah, for he's still so consistent time. that it's very difficult yeah. to imagine he won't be top 16 yeah in for a, sure in a for year sure. from now I'm pretty sure he will but yeah. then there's Sui, Anton Su- Sui Wang hasn't mm. been doing that well so no, no 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 for me to see if if they will have another one in top 16 it will be either Lin the left handed yeah or Li yeah. right handed yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, my yeah. favorite is definitely Lin Chun Yi. I yeah, th- I think he's really, yeah, going places at the moment. Actually, he's uh, playing good. Yeah, but he is, he I is. will say, I I played against Lee in the quarterfinal in Singapore, yeah. and he was playing extremely well in the first yeah. game. I had absolutely no idea what to do. Yeah. Okay. So he's definitely, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm not too. I'm not too familiar with his game. Actually, I wasn't I either. Uh, but I, I was shocked <laughs> during that first game. Yeah. Um, he was playing super well. So okay. I'm not. That convinced that that Lee will be the the one taking the second spot, if he enters top sixteen. Yeah, I and think you, for both you, of them it will be difficult. You need to mention that it's extremely difficult at the moment to be in top sixteen yeah. in men's singles. Yeah, I think it, I just got there again. Okay, all right, well done, well done. <laughs> I, yeah. it, especially in an Olympic qualifying year, it takes uh, like you need to be really consistent at a very high level. Mm. So like it's not enough winning uh, a few matches here and there. You need a few really good results, and then you need a lot of very consistent results, which is like stuff like quarterfinals mm. uh, and better. Yeah, yeah. You were about to say something, or it, let's jump to another. Question. Yeah, I was just about to say that there's also you and Gemke, oh, which yeah. is a pretty interesting race as well. I'm that's right. I'm counting on Victor being top sixteen. Yeah. I think that it's it's highly <laughs> likely that he will be in top 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then there's me and Rasmus. Yeah. That's right. Um, 
that's going to be interesting as well mm. we are also like good friends from from yeah. way, from way back yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah. it's it's definitely complicated and yeah. awkward as yeah. well um yeah, yeah there's no doubt that for me it changed my friendship with Jan. it's not that we're not good friends we're still good friends but that one year uh yeah it just changed it was it was much more difficult to like see each other privately and mm. like uh, you couldn't really have the same kind of talks because it was just it was just more awkward mm. uh, I, I, ho- I, I really hope that we can just still be yeah, joking about it yeah, I mean yeah. um, he texted me when I was uh, injured uh, he was out playing tournaments I don't know which one it was but he texted me how's it going with the injury mm. and I was like Oh, okay, so you're checking up on your <laughs> on your biggest uh, rival yeah, here in, yeah. in the Olympic qualification yeah. period. And he was like, "Ah, yeah, I'm 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 checking in on you guys, yeah, so making yeah. sure that <laughs> or getting to know how, yeah. how everything's going." But, um, but I guess but we will can, go yeah. through couples therapy afterwards, <laughs> and then we'll get 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 back together and be good friends. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. but I guess for you guys, it's also right now not so much about focusing on what the other guy does, but no. more about just getting back to the level where you're One, yeah, performing 100%. at the level you want to, where yeah. there's no doubt you're going to be top 16. Cause, yeah. And it, it, it doesn't necessarily do anything good for you to have this in mind no, all no, the time, no. that there's this thing that you need to qualify yeah. for and just brings like extra pressure into mm. every single match. Yeah. So, I mean, my goal is to get back in the top of the world. Yeah. And if I do that, it's highly possible that I will qualify for the Olympics as well. Yeah. But the Olympics is something that's like secondary. Yeah. This is my main goal. And if I reach that, I'm yeah. pretty sure the Olympics will follow Th- as well. Things will take care of itself. Then. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, th- I feel like it's just about keeping your head in the game and trying to focus on developing and mm-hmm. creating the results that you that you want to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not 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 giving too much attention or focus to something that you can't really change yeah. anyway. Yeah. I mean, you can think about the rankings from now on and mm. and until the day you you retire, but you can't really change anything mm, other true. than going out and yeah. and performing on yeah. court. Who else? Um, China. I, I I feel like sometimes when when the Chinese players play plays against play. Play against my, each other. my English today is uh is you're rusty yeah it's, we are it's, both rusty it's not really it's good. fine but sometimes you have a feeling like okay this guy won quite convincingly um what happened there mm. um but they played against each other in Singapore and both the matches was 21 19 in mm-hmm. the third game yeah, so it yeah. seemed like they were giving their absolute best and tried to win the match that was Shiyuki and Shiyuki against Lu Guangzhou Lu Guangzhou uh, he won 21 19 in the third and then it was Wing Hong Yang against Li Shifeng mm. and Li Shifeng Li Shifeng <laughs> won 21 19 in the third yeah, so yeah. Uh, but yeah. I would say that those two is probably the two players going to qualify yeah but I they could so. get yeah. free free players into top 16. Yeah. I think that's also like for the coaches that will be their goal also mm. because if you have three guys in top 16, if you then select the two top guys, if one of them get injured, then you have the chance of actually getting your third guy to go instead. Where if he's not top 16, your third guy, then the spot will just go to someone else. Okay. So it's, it's very important also for the national team coaches to have as many guys as possible inside top 16. Okay. Maybe at the moment, ah, uh, no, I'm not sure about that. But maybe they have like three players already into the top 16. Lu Guangxu. Ah, I don't Shiyuki. think he's top 16. Do you think he's top 16? Lu Guangxu? I'm quite sure he is. Okay, I'll check. Look it up. Check. Look it up. I'll then check. I talk to the to the audience. Uh, I have the rankings meanwhile. right here. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Lu Guangxu is uh, number 12, so I'm completely off. And then we have See Sa- guys. Sao Yunping as the Research. next one. 22, yeah. He's 12th in the world, Lu Guangzhou. So that surprises me. He's actually <laughs> only two spots after uh, Li Shifeng. Um, what else? What else? What else? I mentioned a few in the beginning. Indonesia. 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 They have Chico Wadoyo as the number third guy right now at 23. And Japan has uh, number four in Naraoka. They have uh, Nishimoto at 11 and Sunuyama at 14. Yeah, and then they have this guy Kento. That's also going to be very Momota, I think. 
Have you heard about him, guys? <laughs> but he's actually down to 34. That is crazy. Yes. Wow. He cannot even get into the big tournaments anymore. Wow, that's crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. That's going to be very interesting to follow Japan uh, as well. Um, Sunyama, Nishimoto, Kodai seems like yeah. the one that's uh, pretty certain to qualify if he continues. Uh, yeah, Kodai way. seems to be the one. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it's going to be either. Nishimoto, Sunyama, or Kento Momote, if he somehow can can get back, back to yeah. to where he was. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was really sad watching his match against uh, uh, in Kalong in uh, in Indonesia. In Indonesia, it was yeah really <clears throat> a poor performance for a guy of uh, yeah, his caliber. Me and my coach uh, Joachim, we did this thing where we just uh, we talked about all the first rounds in men's singles. Mm -hmm. And then we said like, okay, let's let's choose who we think is going to win every single match, yeah. and yeah. Uh, and the one that hits uh, the most of the winners uh, gets a uh, dinner or coffee yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, and both of us had Momota to win. Okay. Um, wow. But he well, didn't. Just explain to me it's why. Just, I, I just, then I'll find a statistics for you now that shows that you are. It's it's just. Uh, and I mean, I, I probably know the statistics. I know that he has been doing not very well for a long, long time. But it's just like we st we still believe in yeah. him. <laughs> we still feel like the level must be there. I mean, he's such a good player. In the past eight tournaments, how many times do you think he lost in the first round? Seven. Yeah. He only has a semifinal in German Open and in all of the tournaments. It's, he's lost first round. It's pretty insane to 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 see the downfall of Kento at it the is, moment. Um, but as mentioned, we just we just yeah, you still believe in we him. just still believe that that he he has the level to yeah. to win. Uh, he's mm. such a good player and he still has yeah. the skills, no doubt about that. But uh, for sure, something is not right. Uh, Let us know, guys, in the comment sections what you feel is uh, is going on with Kento at the moment because it's difficult to like pinpoint exactly. Mm where he's he's lacking and 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 what's not totally working for him it could actually be interesting to to hear some thoughts uh about that sure. um if we get like no comments about that then i guess it's clear that the audience haven't been watching all the way to the end <laughs> <laughs> so so fair enough yeah we've been on for a while now yeah let's uh let's wrap it up i think it's been a, it's been a, a good episode um so thank you so much guys for watching um it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure once again. Uh, if you haven't done it, please subscribe to the Bamton Experience on YouTube. Like this video and leave a comment. Let us know what you think about some of the topics that we have been talking about uh, today on this episode of the Bamton Experience. Yeah. Goodbye, guys. See you.